This is part 36 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between NGO on changes and property setter and when to use one or the other. In our previous two videos, we discussed there are two approaches to detect and react when an input property value changes. We can either use NGO on changes lifecycle hook or a property setter. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between the two and when to use one or the other. Both these approaches have their own use cases. Your software requirement determines which approach to use. Let's understand this with an example. At the moment, our list page displays one employee at a time and it is this display employee component which is responsible for displaying these employee details. This display employee component is the child component which is nested inside the parent component, list employees component. And this child component has got one input property employee with a setter and a getter. Inside the setter, we have some code which logs any changes to this employee property to the browser console. We don't need this logging code anymore, so I'm going to delete that. Now let's add another input property to this child component. Let's name it employee ID. This is going to be of type number. Since this is an input property, let's decorate it with at input decorator. Now let me deviate a bit and quickly show you something. If we take a look at this explorer window, notice the file name display employee component is in red color. That's because we have a linting error in this file reported by our linting tool tslint. Notice we have a trailing white space and because of that linting error, the respective file is shown in red color. To get rid of this red color, we have to fix this linting error. We can simply delete this white space by selecting it or we can right click on the document and select this option from the context menu, format document or we can use the keyboard shortcut Alt Shift F. This is going to fix most of the linting errors if not all. And once we have the linting error fixed, now if we take a look at the file explorer, notice the file name is no longer in red color. At the moment, our child component has got two input properties, employee ID and employee. And here is our requirement. When any of the input properties change, we want to log those changes to the browser console. And we can very easily achieve this using ng on changes lifecycle hook. Because this lifecycle hook is automatically invoked when any of the input properties change. So let's tap into this lifecycle hook. So this ng on changes method is automatically called whenever any of these two input properties change. Each input property that has changed will be attached to this simple changes object using the property name as the key. For example, if our employee input property changes, then the changes will be in a key attached to this changes object called employee. Along the same lines, if our employee ID input property changes, then this changes object will have a key called employee ID and that key will have the changes to that input property. So now we can loop over those keys using a for loop like this. So this keys method right here returns the keys that are attached to this simple changes object. Now let's log those keys to the browser console and see what we have got. Now take a look at the console tab in the browser developer tools. Notice the key employee is logged to the console and every time we click this button that same key is logged. When we click this button the employee input property is changed and when that happens this ng on changes lifecycle hook method is called and the property name is attached to this changes object as a key and we are logging that to the browser console. So every time we click the button, the key employee is logged to the console. Now you might be wondering then why is this input property employee ID not logged to the console? That's because when we click this button, that property is not changed and that's the reason it's not logged to the console. So let's go ahead and bind to this employee ID input property as well. 
we do that within our parent component which is list employee component so within the view template just like how we are binding to the employee input property let's also bind to employee ID input property let's bind it to the ID property on this employee to display object notice now both the keys are logged to the console we can use these keys to get access to the corresponding input property changes and log them to the console. Let's quickly do that now. Back in our child component, within our ng on changes lifecycle hook, instead of logging the property name to the console, I'm going to create a constant here. Let's call it change, and that equals our changes object. And we know this changes object is going to have this key with either employee ID or employee, which we have in this constant prop name. So using this key, we are getting access to the corresponding input property. Next, I'm going to create another constant. Let's name it from, and I'm going to use json.stringify. And then to this, let's pass this constant change, and this is going to have the property previous value, which gives us access to the value of this input property before the change is actually made. And I'm going to create another constant let's name this to and again we use json.stringify and we get the current value finally let's log how the property has changed to the browser console notice now the input property changes are logged to the console as expected Notice employee ID has changed from undefined to one and employee input property also changed from undefined to this employee object. Since this is the first time these two input properties are changing, they're changing from undefined to something else. So every time we click this button, notice the two input properties change accordingly. Now let's hard code the employee ID to a value of one right here instead of binding to the ID property on employee to display object and see what actually happens. Notice now on the initial page load, both the properties employee ID and employee are changing from undefined to something else. Now when I click this view next employee button, look what happens. Only the employee property has changed, but not the employee ID. Why is that? That's because we have hard coded the employee ID input property value to one. So when we click this view next employee button, we are changing the employee to display object, but not the value for this input property employee ID. So the important point to keep in mind is only those input properties that have changed will be attached to this simple changes object. So for example, if you have got five input properties within your child component, and out of those five input properties, if only three input properties have changed, those three input properties will be attached to this simple changes object. Now, if we have to achieve this exact same thing using a property setter, it's a bit tedious because we have to have this logging code in every property setter. At the moment, we have two input properties. So we have to have this similar logging code in both the input properties. Now imagine if you have like 10 properties, we have to repeat the same kind of logging code in all those 10 input property setters. Let's quickly do the same thing using property setters. First, let's delete the implementation of ng on changes and let's also stop implementing on changes interface. Next, let's include a getter and a setter for this employee ID input property. First, let's include a private backing field. Now we need to include a setter. Finally, a getter. Now, all that is left to do is log the property changes to the browser console. We do that within the setter of the corresponding property. So first, let's log the changes to the employee ID property. So let's log this hard-coded string employee ID changed from 
So to get access to the previous value, we're using the private backing field employee ID. And let's also use json.stringify to stringify the value. Let's do the same thing for our employee input property as well. So I'm going to make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. So within the setter of our employee input property, let's paste this and then change where required. So the property name is employee, change it from, to get access to the current value, we use underscore employee private backing field. And to get the current value, we use the val property. Let's save our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice both the property changes are logged to the console as expected. When we click this button, notice only the employee property is logged, but not the employee ID property. That's because employee ID property value at the moment is hard coded. So let's again bind to the ID property of this employee to display object. Now, every time we click this button, both the properties change and those changes are locked to the console as expected. So, with onChanges lifecycle hook, we get all the changes instead of just the changes related to a single input property. This is very useful when dealing with multiple input properties. Property setter, on the other hand, is specific to a given property. So, we only get changes of that specific property. Useful when you want to keep track of a single input property or when you want to take different actions when different input properties change. At the moment, on our list page, we are displaying one employee at a time. We did this to understand property setters and ng on changes lifecycle hook. Now let's undo those changes so we have our list back. First, within our list employee component view template, we don't need all this HTML. Let's delete that and let's uncomment this HTML. Next, within the list employees component class, we don't need these two properties right here. We don't need this line within our ng on init lifecycle hook. And we don't need this next employee method as well. Finally, in display employee component class, we don't need these two types, simple changes and on changes. And we also don't need these two input properties here. So let's delete both of them. And then let's include employee property without a getter and a setter. This is an input property. So let's decorate it with at input decorator. Let's save all our changes and then take a quick look at the browser. Notice we don't have any errors on the console tab and on our list route, we have our list of employees. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.